Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Was King Arthur a real person? Historians have been debating this for years, and many have searched for the real locations of battles and the legendary Excalibur. From the round table to newly discovered texts, here are 10 clues as to what happened to King Arthur. Number 10. The Battle of Badon Hill the Battle of Badon Hill has been a huge part of the Arthurian narrative since the beginning. In the 5th or 6th centuries, the Anglo-Saxons began invading the Britons, and the Battle of Badon was believed to have been a major victory for the Britons. While historians believe the Battle of Badon was real, whether King Arthur led the battle or not is up for debate. According to records by 9th century historian Nennius in his Historia Britonum, it was Arthur's 12th battle, and it is said that 940 enemy fighters died by Arthur's hand alone, and was his greatest victory over the Saxons. This victory brought about an extended period of peace to Britain, but as is the case with all Arthurian legends, there's some debate as to the actual course of events and where the battle even took place. The first issue relates to the actual site of the battle. There are at least four places that claim to be the location of Badon Hill, such as Liddington Castle near the town of Badbury, the Badbury Rings in Dorset, the city of Bath or Bowden Hill in Scotland. There are also questions about whether Arthur truly was involved in this battle. It's mentioned in numerous other texts without any reference to his name, which seems strange if he truly were responsible for turning the tide of events. But regardless, the Battle of Badon Hill is entrenched in Arthurian legend as his most successful conquest. Number 9. The Round Table One of the most iconic things representative of King Arthur is his Round Table, a place where everyone was equal and no knight ranked higher than another. But the truth behind this iconic table might have been even grander than the story suggests. Some historians now believe the site of the table was built on a former Roman amphitheater in the town of Chester. Instead of being a piece of furniture from a medieval Ikea, they suggest that it was, in fact, a giant wooden and stone structure that would have been perfect for at least 1,000 of his followers to gather in one place. The regional noblemen would have sat in the front rows with those of lesser ranks sitting on stone benches on the outside. The reason why this site has gained traction with historians is because of the way Arthur's base of operations, Camelot, was described in a 6th century text as a city of legions with a martyr shrine within it. The amphitheater has an execution stone in it along with a wooden memorial to Christian martyrs and matches very closely with this account. So rather than being some sort of giant stone meeting table, it was actually symbolic of a round place. Pretty interesting, right? I mean, otherwise, how else are you going to have 1,000 knights sitting at a circular table? Number 8. Glastonbury Abbey Glastonbury is mainly known for being host to the largest Greenfield music festival in the world, but the place is steeped in history and central to Arthurian legend as the possible final resting place of the king. In the year 1191, the monks of the town's abbey claimed to have discovered the tomb of Arthur and Guinevere. To celebrate the visit of King Edward I in 1278, the tomb was opened where it was said to be located before the high altar, and it was described by a historian who visited the site in the 1530s as being made of black marble with four lions at its base, a crucifix at the head, and an image of Arthur at the foot. The site has been visited by countless tourists over the century, but again, is the subject of debate. You know how historians love to debate, don't we all? Just check out any comment section. It probably depends how much you believe about the exploits of King Arthur whether you believe this burial site is real or not. Skeptics are not convinced, and point to a fire that virtually destroyed the abbey in 1184 as being a reason why the monks may have fabricated the entire story in order to attract visitors and therefore the funds needed to rebuild. See? Clever. Still, there's a memorial in the place where the tomb is said to have once been, and this can still be seen today if you want to visit. It might not be the real physical site, but to many it is symbolic and doesn't really matter if it's the real place or not. Number 7. The Sword in the Lake Undoubtedly, the most famous story to do with King Arthur is that of his sword, Excalibur, and the Lady of the Lake. Legend is rather vague as to the true location of this lake where the sword came from and was later returned when Arthur was mortally wounded. There are at least eight different places that have been suggested. Perhaps the most interesting is Dosmary Pool in Cornwall. High up in Bodmin Moor, to the south of the town of Bolventor, many people have believed that its size and location match up with the stories. 
Furthermore, in 2017, a schoolgirl, while paddling in the water of the pool with her father, stumbled across a seemingly old artifact in the mud, a sword. Her family couldn't believe what she had found, and for a while, the discovery made the news around the world. It appeared, though, that the sword was only a few decades old, rather than dating back to King Arthur's time. Until a true ancient artifact is found beneath the water, we'll never know for sure where the fabled lake is. But it's quite possible that the truth will one day be revealed. Number 6. Tintagel Castle According to legend, Tintagel Castle in Cornwall is the place where King Arthur was conceived. So the story goes, his father, Uther Pendragon, fell in love with the Duke of Cornwall's wife, Igraine, so he convinced Merlin to change his appearance so he looked like her husband. He then snuck into their castle, Tintagel, and spent the night with her and Arthur was conceived. When the Duke died, Uther Pendragon and Igraine were married. More than being directly mentioned in the tales, there is evidence that links Tintagel Castle back to those times. In 2018, researchers discovered writing on a stone that dates back more than 1300 years. The markings included Christian symbols, Greek letters, and Latin words, in particular phili, which means sun, and viriduo, which means two men. These could be direct references to what took place in the castle, and their discovery has cemented Tintagel Castle's place in Arthurian legend forever. And now for number 5. But first, if you are new here, welcome! And be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to join the Origins Explained family. Number 5. His Children While Mordred is often referred to as Arthur's son, in the original Welsh texts, Mordred is actually his nephew. Arthur did, though, supposedly have five children, whose names I can't pronounce, so I'll just list them here for you. A's tomb is said to be located in an unknown region called Ursing, and according to legend, was killed by Arthur himself and then buried there. It's not entirely clear why Arthur felt the need to kill his son, but neither was A the only one of his offspring to meet an unfortunate end. G was killed by a giant boar, and Duran died on the field of Camlin, the same place where Mordred died. L was known as one of the three well-endowed men of the island of Britain and was also a well-revered soldier like his father. He too died on the battlefield though, an event that inspired several songs and poems. Very little is known about Kay, who was Arthur's son with another woman other than Guinevere, who was the mother of the others. It was clearly a difficult family situation for him, and there's no mention of whether any of his children had any children of their own, with the suggestion being that Arthur's bloodline ended with them. So, regardless of which account you choose to believe, Welsh or otherwise, Arthur's legacy ended soon after. Number 4. The Name Arthur's importance in English and Welsh legend raises an interesting question. Why have there been no King Arthur since? After all, they've had eight Henrys, eight Edwards, six Georges, and four Williams. They are so often named after previously revered kings, so why has this tradition not followed with Arthur? There have actually been children named Arthur who were in line to the throne, but they died very young. And it may be this bad luck that prevented any more being given the name. One possible heir of Richard I was called Arthur, but he died at the age of 16, and the eldest son of Henry VII was also called Arthur and died at the age of 15. The loss of this Arthur led to the reign of Henry VIII, who was said should have never been king. The name still plays an important role in the royal family, though. It's one of the middle names of Prince Charles, Prince William, and Prince Louis. Number 3. The Holy Grail the Holy Grail is the last cup which Christ is said to have drunk from and was later used to catch his blood as he hung on the cross. During the time of King Arthur, the search for the Holy Grail was seen as the highest spiritual pursuit for a knight. Various stories mention it being a cup, a dish, or a stone, and believed it to have miraculous powers, such as the ability to grant immortality. The Grail was said to have been in the possession of the Fisher King in his castle, Corbenic, but this king was unable to father any children to continue the duty of protecting the relic. Some stories suggest that the Grail was, in the end, brought to Glastonbury by Joseph of Arimathea, where it came into the possession of Arthur and his knights. Could it be possible that Arthur actually achieved the mission of obtaining the Grail? And if so, could he have achieved immortality and, instead of dying, retiring into isolation until he was needed to return? That's what some would like to believe. Number 2. The Battle of Camlin Despite the possibility of Arthur finding a magical way to avoid the inevitable, most stories point to the Battle of Camlin as being where his life was ended. 
Arthur had been away with his forces in Europe and faced a series of battles on his return to England. This culminated in his final battle at Camelin, where he was mortally wounded by his nephew, or maybe evil son, Mordred. As Mordred's sword cleaved Arthur's skull, Arthur's spear pierced his nephew's heart, and they both fell down to die. Arthur's last words were his request for his sword to be returned to the lake from where it had come. It was said that from the mists of the lake three fairy queens appeared, who put his body on a barge and sailed him to the mystical land of Avalon, where they would cure him of his wounds. There he still lays, ready to return when Britain needs him. Again, evidence to support the story is hard to come by. Five places that are thought to be potential sites for Arthur's final battle, all of which show signs of an ancient fight having taken place. Whether or not the battle went as the stories say, though, is something that's virtually impossible to prove. Number 1. There's still more to be learned. With all the written accounts that have been found from across the ages, we know a lot about the legend of Arthur and his knights. As we have seen, many of the tales are difficult to verify, though, but even now, further details are still being found. In early 2019, it was announced that seven fragments of an ancient manuscript had been found in an old book at the University of Bristol's library, and the people that studied them instantly recognized some Arthurian names. It's thought that the newly found texts were related to new stories about Arthur, and appear to date back to the 13th century, which would have been a few hundred years after his death. As well as detailed accounts of battles and the deaths of some characters, there's also much more information about Merlin and his adventures, as well as about Arthur. Further study is, of course, needed, but who knows what other writings are still waiting to be discovered and could help prove, once and for all, what happened to King Arthur. Thanks for watching! Do you think King Arthur was a real person? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to recommend any good books about the subject, too. I'd love to see them. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next time! Bye!